original music. So Izzy is a brass performer, composer, arranger, and educator from Orlando, Florida. She's actually a graduate from the Berklee College of Music. She writes original music and is arranged for small jazz ensembles, big bands, and original song releases. We all know that she's amazing and she blends her favorite styles into her own experimental genre. She's basically a music educator specializing in instrumental music who believes in a customizable and student-centered curriculum. And she's obviously here with us because she believes that you know, everyone deserves equal access to music education. She's just here to provide us with more insights into Berkeley and just how colleges of music work. She's also actually featured as a trombone and trumpet player on Berkeley professor Peter Bell's album, Just Saying. She's also a full tuition scholarship recipient at University of Miami and Berkeley College of Music, which is awesome. Izzy recently released her debut album, What a Wonderful Life, a collection of original songs celebrating her graduation from Berkeley College of Music, which is an absolute achievement. We're so proud of you, Izzy. She also, she also released four singles in 2021, two which will be on the album Game Like Mine and Meant to Be. And the album takes listeners through Izzy's story of childhood, through Izzy's favorite genres, lessons, and harmonies of life. So, and you know, she's known for playing music in Latin, classical, funk, and R&B. So if you're all interested in that and more like pop genres, make sure to go listen to her um, albums and songs, definitely. Next slide. And now we're going to move on to um, Izzy's presentation that she has made for you guys. All right, hello everyone. It's so great to be here on this webinar um, as this organization has uh, really well introduced me. Thank you so much for the kind words. I'm Izzy. I just graduated Berkeley this year, and I'm going to talk about all the ins and outs of what it's like applying for Berkeley and auditioning for Berkeley and what it's like being a Berkeley student, because this school is different than any other music school you're going to apply to. I can promise you that. It's completely different. And I'll talk about why, of course, during this presentation. But what I'll start off by saying is that Berkeley is such a diverse community full of people from around the world that share so many insights into music that you're not gonna know of until you get there. There's so much to learn from everybody in the community. And it's not just the Boston campus. There's a campus in Spain, New York, there's online students. I mean, I even had to take classes online because of the pandemic. So, and yes, I did attend Berkeley during the beginning of the pandemic. So I got that experience as well. And everything was online. And of course that is very limiting to a lot of people, but we still all made music together. And I still learned a lot and got to meet some amazing professors and students. So let's dive in here. Adding a little more to my introduction, I graduated in the class of 2022. I actually started Berkeley in fall 2020. So this was when Berkeley was entirely remote at the start of the pandemic. We were online just for that one semester and then everything started trickling back in person and now we're completely back in person. I compose and arrange my own music and also uh, I arrange jazz pop songs. And uh, I play trombone mostly. That was my uh, primary instrument at Berkeley. But I also play trumpet. And you're going to find a lot of people at Berkeley who play multiple instruments. And that's such a cool thing because you can know one friend at Berkeley and have them record every song for your EP or something like that. There's so many great, unique people. And I majored in professional music. I'm not going to talk about every major in this presentation, but I'll talk about professional music very quickly as it's a very unique major. When you apply to other schools, you might apply as a performance major or a music ed major that has a specific track. It, they have courses set for you to take that you have to take and you can't customize it. But what's cool about professional music is that it's a bachelor's degree or a professional diploma. We'll talk about the difference that you get to choose 
two or three areas of your concentration, you get to decide what you want to learn at Berkeley. So you can choose from uh, production and jazz or jazz composition or musicology, you know, jazz and gender justice, so many different areas. My concentrations were music education, songwriting, and contemporary writing and production. I chose those because I really wanted to get everything out of Berkeley that I could and really expand my horizons and take take myself out of my comfort zone from what I already knew. And last thing about my introduction, I'm a current executive board member at Berkeley Esports. That's the gaming club at Berkeley. Fun fact, it's also the largest club at Berkeley. Um, and we have a huge gaming community here of casual and competitive gamers. We do lots of game nights together at Berkeley and some in collaboration with Campus Life, which is the department at Berkeley that runs orientation and housing. So we are a pretty big deal and it's a blast being on that board. Okay, so just to run you all through what I'm going to talk about today, I'm gonna to first start off by talking about what it was like for me to apply to music colleges because I didn't apply to just Berkeley. I applied to nine schools in total. Then I'm going to talk about what it's like for you to audition to apply and audition for Berkeley because that process is very different from other schools. Then I'm going to talk about what makes Berkeley so unique from other schools, diving into what the Berkeley community is all about. And then I'm going to end off with my advice. And at the end, we're going to have a QA where you can ask any and all questions you want because there is so much about Berkeley that I don't have the time for in this presentation. So let's start off with what I did when I started applying to music colleges. And this is different for everybody. You might think that everyone who applies to Berkeley is you know, set on applying to Berkeley from when they were a kid. I've heard those stories everywhere of people who thought when they were 11 years old, I'm definitely going to Berkeley College of Music. That was actually not me at all. I did not hear about Berkeley until my junior year of high school when I applied for their Berkeley Global Jazz Institute jazz workshop at the Newport Jazz Festival. That's one of their summer programs that actually gives you a full uh, tuition scholarship to attend. So I didn't have to pay anything to attend this, um, unlike their other programs. That's how I found out about Berkeley. And then that was before my senior year. I just decided, you know what? I really like their programs here. After hearing from some alumni, I, I like what they have to offer. I love their Global Jazz Institute. I like the professional music major. Let's try it out. Let's see if I get in. So for me, it was really just a bit of a long shot. I didn't know if I was going to attend. I had no idea all that I would get out. Um, but my experience is definitely different from, I guess, what people would consider uh, the one of the many Berkeley quote unquote stereotypes that you know, kids have dreams of attending Berkeley when they're older. Um, that was definitely not me. Um, I applied to some other schools too, um, mostly as a music education major because these other schools did not have a major like the professional music major at Berkeley. Schools like New York University, University of Miami, um, and Oberlin Conservatory as a performance major. Those are all private schools. And I also applied to some schools in Florida because that's the state I'm from such as Stetson, Rollins, Florida Southern College, uh, UNF, and also FSU. So I applied to all of these schools, um, every single school on this list, except Berkeley and Oberlin as a music ed major, um, because that's just, that's what was available to me. And those schools in comparison to Berkeley are very different. They mostly had classical music only with some jazz, on the side as an elective, whereas Berkeley, you have jazz and contemporary music at the center of everything. You're going to find classical music at Berkeley. There is classical music and there is the Boston Conservatory at Berkeley, but that is not the center of the Berkeley experience. Um, I know some friends who go to Berkeley for classical music, but um, it's quite rare. Um, most people who do this uh, play classical music because that's what they started out with. And they go to Berkeley because of all the majors that we have, such as uh, our new major, video game scoring, where you can really dive into something new that you can't get at any of the other schools. So what I, one of my tips that I'll share right now, 
Um, I know some of you might have uh, a dead set dream of attending Berkeley, but I would recommend definitely apply to a few other schools because you never know what's going to happen. Berkeley is an expensive school, and I'm very, very grateful to get a full tuition scholarship. Um, but not all students get this full tuition scholarship. And I've noticed that this scholarship, um, most of the full tuition scholarship recipients um, are people who play uncommon instruments. Like I play trombone. There's not a lot of trombone players at Berkeley or violin players, for example, few and far in between. So definitely keep your options open and pour your heart into Berkeley. You never know you might get in, but I would always recommend you never know what's going to happen. Uh, definitely keep other schools on the table too. So when you apply to Berkeley, you're not applying for a specific major. You actually enter Berkeley as an undeclared major and you have to apply for a major once you're already in the college. So you, everyone that applies to Berkeley is on the same playing field and you don't have to consider the major when you do your audition and interview. You can, if you want to, by all means, go for it. I knew that I wanted to do professional music, but there's also a lot of time to decide if you don't know yet. Some people might be on uh, at that level right now where they just wanna to go to Berkeley and not know what they wanna do yet. And that is totally cool because you have three semesters after starting Berkeley to decide what you want to do. And also, if you apply to other schools, you don't need to apply for the same major either. Of course, keep your options open. And I'm going to talk about this more when I discuss the audition process. But what I found about people at Berkeley is that it's not just about your talent. It's not about how fast you can play a passage or all the high notes you can play on your trumpet. That's very showy and it can be really cool to hear. But what Berkeley wants to hear, especially when you do your interview, is how passionate of, of, how passionate you are about attending Berkeley and all that you're going to get out of it. And this is what I really focused on during my audition and interview. And I think that's what helped me um, really uh, be successful during this process because I knew that Berkeley was my number one choice. So th that's just a quick tip for that. So Berkeley is the number one contemporary music school. I think most of us know that, but what does contemporary music really mean? Like what kind of music is at Berkeley? At a glance, you're going to see a lot of musicians who do a lot of different things. A lot of people at Berkeley don't just play one genre of music. They might play violin, for example, but they might produce EDM music. It's, it's an amazing combination. And it's really out of the ordinary from what you will, you will see at any other music school. You're going to see um, lots of ensembles at Berkeley. Um, there's actually over 300 ensembles at Berkeley. I would say about half of these are jazz ensembles, but the other half of these ensembles are stuff like, uh, stuff like pop music. We have a Beyonce ensemble. We have even an anime music ensemble that's student led. We have uh, ensembles for, for video game music, rock, um, funk, hip hop ensembles, and a lot of ensembles that are, are artist ensembles, such as the Beyonce ensemble that play music by that artist. So they, if, no matter what instrument uh, you play, they're really going to get you um, out of your comfort zone. And it's going to be an ensemble unlike any other ensemble that you're going to get at any college. We don't just have you know, jazz band one, two, three. We have, ensemble, we have ensembles from any genre that you can think of under the sun at Berkeley. And that's what I, one of the things that makes Berkeley so special. And another one of the Berkeley stereotypes that I'm going to debunk here is that, uh, oh, all Berkeley students are just singer songwriters or are rock guitarists. Um, this is definitely not true. I've actually met a lot more people at Berkeley who play jazz or funk or uh, play anime music, for example, than singer songwriters. There, there are a lot of singers at Berkeley. It's actually the biggest department at Berkeley, but there are so many kinds of people at Berkeley from lots of different genres, and they really paved their own path. Um, a fun fact that um, I don't know if all of you know, but the Berkeley logo looks like a natural sign. And it looks like that because 
uh, the whole mantra for Berkeley is to be natural. So you, they really want you to be yourself and show the best of you. And the way that they do that is not by making you choose a specific genre when you get in. You can do what you want. So what happens during your application and audition? Surprisingly, the application for Berkeley is actually pretty short. It's really not stressful at all. I think it took me the most of 15 minutes to complete. You're going to, of course, have to enter your basic information, your name, your pronouns, a preferred name if you have one, your address, what school you go to right now, your parents' information, and then there's a section on the application that asks you if you have any, uh, any prior involvement with Berkeley, whether that's at a Berkeley summer program or if you studied with a Berkeley alumni, for example. And then you can do an optional essay or video. Keep in mind this is optional. And this might be a shocker to a lot of you because a lot of other schools, especially state schools, uh, take applications through the common application where you have these essays that you have to fill out for the school. Berkeley doesn't do this. They just want to consider your audition and your passion. Those are really the only two major components that I would say that gets you in. And at the end of your application, you get to pick your audition location. So some people audition at Berkeley in Boston. You can do that. but Berkeley also has faculty that travels around the world to do your audition at or near your hometown. For me, I live in Orlando, Florida. So I was actually able to have my audition at a recording studio in Orlando, Florida. And it was only about 30 minutes away from my house. So I only had to miss about two classes that day at school. And right after my audition, I was able to take it all in and go back to school and go back to my jazz class and do what I was doing before. So you get to choose your top two options and take it from there. And then it's about the audition. So these are two sections for my actual application. You can take a screenshot of these if you want to. Um, the section on the top is the section that I discussed about prior involvement with Berkeley. So it asks questions about your um, musical background. If, your parent is a professional musician or if you've studied with a Berkeley alumni. Uh, it basically just wants to know if you have any connection to a musical family or people at Berkeley. And then the section on the bottom is the optional supplemental material section. So if you have a resume highlighting your performances and teachers that you study with, which I highly recommend, you can send that for Berkeley to read over in this section of your application. There are a couple sections of the application that might look very new to you, um, especially because Berkeley doesn't always explain this head on in the application. So I wanna go over just a few things um, on your application that you're going to pick from. That way you don't make the same mistakes as I do and accidentally pick the wrong program. First off, Berkeley is a different school from the Boston Conservatory at Berkeley. This might seem a little confusing at first. Boston Conservatory is, if you don't know, is a school for uh, classical music and contemporary dance and contemporary theater. It was a separate school. I think it started uh, sometime in the 1800s. It's a very old school. And it merged with Berkeley in 2016 so that Berkeley students get to take classes in dance and theater at BOCO. And the Boston Conservatory music students get, got to take some contemporary music classes at Berkeley. So there was really this whole partnership going on. But these are two different schools. So if, you, if you're set on the whole contemporary music side of things and stuff like the professional music major, make sure you're applying to Berkeley. But if you are set on uh, if you've heard of a dance program at Berkeley or theater program at Berkeley, that's the Boston Conservatory. And um, no matter which of these two schools you go to, you get to take classes from the other institution. And they can count either for a minor or as your general electives. Um, I, I never did this because um, my first couple semesters were online, but it is a really cool option for you if you have 
experience in dance or theater or want to get experience in dance and theater at the Boston Conservatory, um, there are a lot of um, introductory and even intermediate classes open for all majors at Berkeley. Next up is the difference between a Bachelor of Music and a professional diploma. You, this will be asked on your Berkeley College of Music application, and it's very important, you know, the difference. Um, mostly saying this because I myself chose the wrong program. I clicked professional diploma because I thought that was professional music. It's not. So a Bachelor of Music is a, a degree uh, that most music colleges offer. It's it is a bachelor's degree. It's a four-year program where you're going to take your core music classes, your private lessons, ensembles, plus you're going to take around 40 credits of liberal arts classes. So other schools call these gen eds. Classes like English, you have to take a math or science class at Berkeley, and we even have an art history class, which that might sound boring, but I actually found it really fascinating. These liberal arts classes are only required for the Bachelor of Music degree. The professional diploma is more common for people who already have a degree from another school and just want to go to Berkeley to um, meet people, build that network, and have that credition that they went to Berkeley. But it does not include liberal arts classes, and it is not a degree. So I would be very careful on your application when you see these two options. Um, make sure you choose um, what you're sure you're going for and pick the right program. If you want to switch, you can. Um, I was able to switch to Bachelor of Music like I intended, um, but I'm not sure how easy that's going to be for everybody. So I would just make sure you do this right off the bat. Okay, this is one of the most common questions I get asked about applying to Berkeley. Do academics matter? And the short answer is no, because this is a music school. SAT scores, whether you're a valedictorian at your high school, uh, how many AP classes you took, as far as Berkeley is concerned, it's not really going to affect your application at all as far as getting admitted into Berkeley. Like I said before, what Berkeley cares about the most is your audition and your passion. Academics is not in that pool at all. And I don't think Berkeley would want to see any failing students enter, but if you have C's or B's, then don't take Berkeley out of the equation because Berkeley is so much more than your grades. This is a music school. The long answer is that having better grades can help you get a scholarship. Uh, part of the reason why I was able to get my full tuition scholarship is because it's merit-based in that my high grades at school and my 1370 SAT score um, were factored into that. And I was able to get a scholarship to Berkeley, um, which otherwise I wouldn't have been able to attend. So you don't need a perfect SAT score to get into Berkeley um, by all means, but they can definitely help you save some money. And Remember, um, I don't know if anyone has told you this yet from Berkeley, but you do not need to apply for any separate scholarship from Berkeley. You're automatically considered. So once, once you um, get your decision letter, you will see um, whether you got that scholarship. You don't have to take any extra steps to do that. Okay, I'm sure we waited long enough to talk about the actual audition itself. Um, this is going to be a very different audition experience than at any other school. Other schools that I've applied to ask you to prepare one specific piece or specific jazz standard to play. Remember, I'm a trombonist. And then I play it with either unaccompanied or with a jazz rhythm section. And then that's it. Berkeley, you really get to pave your own path and pick exactly what piece you want to do because of the fact that Berkeley is not split up by genres. Whether you play rock music or whether you play metal music or funk or hip hop, you can audition with that. And I really want to encourage you all to audition with one of your favorite songs. Like don't try to pick a piece just to please the judges. They Remember, they want to see your passion. They want to hear about what you love to do in music. And 
as cliche as it may sound, they really do want you to be natural. Um, because that's, that is what sets the Berkeley community apart from other schools such as Juilliard, where everybody is doing the exact same thing. So you're going to have to prepare one prepared piece, which can be literally anything. I created a medley of Christmas music in a jazz style to play on my trombone for my audition. You really can do anything. And the reason why I picked that is because that's the music I love. It makes me happy. It made the judges happy. My audition was in November. It was perfect timing. It was great. So you can literally do anything for your prepared piece, as long as you, you know, show off your skills on your instrument. You're going to have to sight read a piece. And a quick insight into sight reading is that it's actually um, not what you might consider to be your typical sight reading experience. Um, instead of getting the piece in front of you at the audition and having about maybe 30 seconds to look at it, you actually get your sight reading excerpt when you walk into your warm up room to get ready for your audition. So you get to quote unquote practice your sight reading about 15 minutes before your audition and really get that down path. And this really helps anyone who might have less experience reading sheet music and just want to have that extra confidence. So, um, and it helped me as well because I don't have the best sight. So sight reading on the spot is quite hard for me, but because of that um, extra prep time, I was able to be successful in that component. Next up is improvisation. You might think, oh, well, improvisation is just jazz, but they really will try to uh, hone in on what genre you play. They'll come up with a groove. On my audition, the, one of the judges played the piano and played a, a blues chord progression for me to improvise on my trumpet. So they'll come up with a simple progression for you to improvise on just to hear how you express yourself in music and how you come up with things spontaneously. Um, and it's a, it's a quick process. It doesn't take up long, a long portion of the audition. And the last part, which is one of the most important parts in my opinion is the interview. And this is a, a very casual interview, I would say. It's about 15 minutes long. You'll be pulled into another room with someone who was not involved in your audition uh, panel. And you'll be asked questions such as, what made you want to apply to Berkeley? Or do you have a major in mind uh, when you, if you attend Berkeley? How do you see yourself contributing to the Berkeley community? They really want to know your story. And this alone is what made my Berkeley audition probably the best audition that I've had at any school because it wasn't just about how good I played my instrument. Every audition is going to have mistakes. But I got to talk about how I started and what I love to play in music, the groups that I got to play with. I got to talk about my time at the Newport Jazz Festival and their summer program. So it was a really joyous experience uh, because it was so personal. And I'm sure a lot of us feel that connection to music. It's, it's a very personal experience because it comes from our hearts. So that is what is in the audition. And of course, if you have any specific questions about that process, you can always drop them in the Q&A. Now, what kind of people are you going to see at Berkeley, you're going to see a lot of people different from you. And I briefly mentioned this, but Berkeley is such a diverse community with every instrument and every genre under the sun crammed into a Boston city campus. It is absolutely, it was absolutely a, a culture shock for me when I first got on campus in the summer of 2021, stepping on foot to the 150 Massachusetts Avenue building into the practice rooms. And next to me on, my, on one side was someone singing. And next to me on the other side was someone playing like a rock guitar or something. It was totally uh, a surreal experience because you will find so many unique people here. Um, some people already have the music out and are already established as artists, but not everyone starts Berkeley with, with a set career in mind. A lot of people, like I mentioned before, are multi-instrumentalists. So 
Uh, the most common matchup you'll see at Berkeley are people who sing, but they also play piano or guitar um, because that's what lets them write songs and they can use that as accompaniment. Um, a lot of songwriting, a lot of my, a lot of my songwriting major friends um, are actually that category. But I also have some friends who play drums and piano or saxophone and bass. It's, you can find everything here. And my path um, that you can also see at Berkeley is people who were in their school's band program and didn't really get the experience of learning contemporary music until Berkeley. And this is another reason why people attend. It's not just people who have played contemporary music all their life. Some of us really want to learn something new and get out of the program that we were sucked into in high school. A lot of my high school experience was me playing euphonium, uh, you know, military marches. I didn't want to do that as my career. A lot of people do, but that wasn't for me. So that's why I chose to um, attend uh, Berkeley College of Music. So what really is the Berkeley niche, I would say? It's a whole melting pot of people, just like I talked about. Considering schools like Juilliard or Manhattan School of Music, for example, which are uh, some of the top schools in the country for classical music and jazz music, people at those schools are all in the same program. So they're all in classical music together in the same exact major because they only offer performance, for example. They're made up of big symphony orchestras people who have long practice sessions and um, have a lot of formal performances with little audience participation and almost no emphasis on technology. Whereas at Berkeley, everything is centered around technology. A fun fact is that if you go to Berkeley, um, you are required to have a MacBook Pro. This is because a lot of the classes that we take use technology and production and notation software um, that really lets us control our own destiny, so to speak, instead of having to get a separate recording engineer at a studio to record your music, Berkeley teaches you how to record your own music. Or instead of writing music by hand for a classical ensemble, Berkeley teaches you how to arrange jazz and contemporary music for vocals or with just horns, different grooves, everything. There is literally everything you can think of here and that's what makes it so unique from every other school. If you're the kind of person that really wants to be in a community, a large community of musicians, people that eat, sleep, breathe music, always having jam sessions and staying up late nights in the dorms producing an EP, then Berkeley is definitely the school for you. You're going to see so many performances. We have student run performances called calf shows at the Berkeley calf, which is the dining hall at Berkeley. So the picture on the bottom left is actually um, an anime music band called Great Days that performed at the CAF earlier this year. It was entirely student run. So you can just see the potential that Berkeley students have to really put their uh, ambitions to reality. Diving deeper into what makes the Berkeley community what it is. I would say there is no competition here. And this is because everyone is on their own path, doing their own thing, trying something new every single day. This is not a Juilliard where you're competing for the top spot in the orchestra. Everyone is on their own path, playing different instruments, different genres, trying to make their own music and really controlling their own careers. So there, I would say there was, at least my time at Berkeley, I did not see any competition amongst uh, my group of, of trombone players and ensembles in general. It's an extremely collaborative environment. Everybody supports each other. When people have the drive to start up a band at Berkeley, everyone's on board, they do it. It's an amazingly positive energy here. 
because of the drive that everyone has to control their, their musical careers. And as I mentioned before, you're going to see so many different kinds of ensembles at Berkeley that do not have a hierarchy. No band here has a hierarchy of first chair, concert master. Everybody really has the same positive energy in putting this together. And they're at Berkeley because they care so much about music that is outside of uh, the norm. Next up, we have so many jam sessions at Berkeley. Wonder why the improvisation component exists in the audition process? That's because contemporary music is so spontaneous, you know, in itself. It's we we read sheet music here, but I would say not a lot of the performances I've had here relied on sheet music. It was really getting to know the group and make up something like on the spot and just try to come up with something. We have lots of we have lots of practice rooms and ensemble rooms here, and people will uh, be able to just book a room and send out in a Discord server on Instagram, hey guys, we're having a jam session at you know 150 room one 177, like stop on by. And anyone is welcome to just hang out and play. And this is one of the first environments where I was really able to meet people who didn't just play jazz. And that was such an amazing experience for me because I didn't want to be limited to just that. I got to meet people who played rock music, funk music, et cetera, et cetera. We have so many recording sessions here at Berkeley because we have huge recording studios on campus that you're able to reserve um, with someone who's a music production and engineering major running the session. So you might recognize this picture. Um, this is Carlos Eni's um, a video game medley arrangement, the jazz video game medley that he actually recorded from Berkeley. And this is the biggest uh, recording studio at Berkeley found in 160 Massachusetts Avenue. And I have been uh, myself and so many other people have been asked throughout their times at Berkeley to take part in these kinds of recording sessions. And I have played songs like Just the Two of Us on trumpet. I played a funk song on, on trumpet. I played a ballad on trombone. They were really some of the best experiences that I've had. Next up, this isn't just about music either. We have lots of opportunities for hanging out as a community because everything on, on campus is so close to each other. So Berkeley Esports is the largest gaming club at Berkeley. And I'm plugging this because it is one of the first communities that I found out about at Berkeley that introduced me to so many other people that also played music, of course, but also played games. And it's such a cool feeling knowing that even though Berkeley is of course, one of the top music schools in the country and everyone lives, breathes, eats, sleeps music, there's still time for us just to be together as people and know that 24 hour grind practice sessions is not the only way out. I don't even think I know a single person at Berkeley who practices for say more than four hours because we're doing so many other things whether that's recording an EP, producing music, writing an arrangement for a class, et cetera. So how can you make the most of Berkeley uh, if, you, if you get in and choose to attend? I would say learn and play everything that you can. There is so much at Berkeley with over 4,000 students at the Boston campus, four years really isn't a lot to take everything in. I only had two years because I was able to just go through fast. Um, so there is going to be so many performances you can attend, so many ensembles you can join, so many elective courses you can take. And even if something is new to you, I would say just take it head on and try it because that's what we're all here for. We are not here to pick a specialty and get good at it. That's what ever the music school in the U.S. does. What Berkeley does is it lets you take classes from across the music industry and really pave your own path to be an independent artist, 
and to have an independent career. Even if you're not a professional music major, you have 10 credits worth of elective space where you can take any class from effortless mastery to microtonal ear training uh, to so much more. We have musicology classes, um, different music history classes, different ensembles, different uh, lab classes where you get to learn even more instruments. So I would say the way to uh, succeed at Berkeley the most is to really just take everything head on and, and go for it. And this is actually the key to having a fulfilling career in general. Some of you might be uh, getting some concerns from your parents or even your band director saying, well, I don't know if music is a very sustainable career. And I counter that by saying it can be sustainable if you have the ambition and drive to really learn all the skills necessary. It's not just about how well you play your instrument anymore. That's not, that's what a lot of schools don't understand. You can play bass, but they're going to be a thousand better bass players than you. And you have to learn how to record your own music. You need to learn how the music business works, which you will learn at Berkeley. You have to learn how to compose and arrange music. It's, it's not just about playing music by the greats. All of these examples are things that you're going to learn from Berkeley and that can make you a sustaining music career because you're not just focusing on one source of freelance income. You can be a performer and a producer. You can be a music attorney and an arranger. You can do all the things you want when you go to Berkeley because you get to pick your own path there. That's all I have for this presentation. Um, you can contact me in any of these mediums below. I have an uh, Instagram account where if you send me a message, um, I'll respond very quickly. I'm really active over there. It's at Izzy Makes Music, Izzy with an I. Um, if any of you still use Facebook, uh, feel free to friend me on there too. And email, um, I haven't received an alumni email yet. So it's best if you just contact me from my personal email, which is IzzyGmusic at gmail.com. So I really um, encourage you all to send me any questions or concerns that you might have down the line because Berkeley is such a unique experience from applying to any other music school. Um, and I'm here for you all. This is such a unique experience. I know it can be a very stressful time. Um, I know that myself because I applied to so many schools and have really had to keep on top of my grades. Um, so if you're really set on Berkeley and want to do this, go for it with no doubts. Um, and please always message me if you need anything. But for now, um, I know that we have some uh, questions um, and we're going to get to those. And I really thank you all for um, watching uh, this presentation and all that I had to say about Berkeley. I really do love talking about it. And um, thank you all so much for that. Thank you so much, Izzy, for that amazing presentation. So we actually have some questions in the chat. I don't know if you want to read them out loud, Jerry, Lily, Sarah, if you want me to. Um, uh, but we can start it off one by one and start. Yeah, you guys can go ahead. Okay, Jerry, you can do that. Sure. Yeah, just really quickly, um, if you guys do have any questions, know that um, the presentation section of this webinar is over. Um, you can do that in the Q and A, but uh, by pressing the Q and A button at the bottom of your screen, uh, and feel free to ask um, any questions. Um, yeah, um, so questions are are coming in. We're going to start uh, from the top, and uh, yeah. So, uh, firstly, uh, Izzy, we had a question um, comparing Berkeley to uh, Juilliard and some other music schools. Um, do you want do you want to elaborate a bit more on that comparison? I know you touched on that in your presentation. Yeah, sure. So this is um, a very good question because Berkeley is so different. Uh, schools like Juilliard, um, the only music majors you'll really see there for your undergrad are performance. Uh, that's really all you can pursue over there. 
and everyone that attends Juilliard is there to be a professional performing musician. At Berkeley, that's not the case because we have, I think it's now 14, uh, no, 15 majors um, across the industry. And I'll just briefly go over those. Um, we have music production and engineering that gives you the skills to record people's music in the studio. We have electronic production and design where that teaches you how to make your own sounds in a DAW and uh, produce electronic music. We have an independent recording major where, where it's for people who want to release their own music and go through all the steps themselves. We have music education and music therapy at Berkeley. We have composition, which is more of a classical composition major that uh, you might see at a master's program at Juilliard. We have jazz composition, which is same thing, but in the jazz context. Um, we have contemporary writing and production. You get to learn how to arrange. We have songwriting, one of the most popular majors. We even have a, a program that's for people who aren't even musicians for music business. So things are really expanding, um, which is really exciting. And uh, two uh, popular programs are film scoring and game scoring. These are programs that you are not gonna see at any other school. The only other school that I know that offers a film scoring degree for undergrad is the University of Miami Frost School of Music. Um, other than that, these are only available in graduate school. And they these programs literally, I would say, are close to a graduate level. You are going to get um, so much experience writing this music and setting up your recording sessions. So the biggest difference between Berkeley and Juilliard is that Berkeley gives you so many more options to be a musician, even if that's not performing your instrument, and also the wide diversity of genres that are at the school. Um, whereas Juilliard, um, you apply for performance, you have to be perfect at your instrument, and um, you are restricted in a way to classical or jazz performance. At Berkeley, that doesn't exist. There's no uh, jazz trumpet or classical trumpet. It's just trumpet. So no matter what instrument the audition is, you can be in any ensemble you want as long as it's open for your instrument. Um, so that's what I would say about that question. Thanks for asking. All right, thank you. So um, we had another question come in. And I'm just going to read it for you. So this responder said that I'm going into my first year of university in Canada, and they're applying, planning to apply for the Boston Conservatory for a musical theater. Um, and so the question is, would my first year credits be transferable to, for the degree? Oh, this is this is a great question. Um, I actually have a, a lot of friends who transferred to Berkeley. Um, not so much Boston Conservatory, but a lot of people who transferred to Berkeley. Um, that really depends on what your program is at your current university. Um, but in most cases, if you're transferring to Berkeley or the Boston Conservatory, um, the only classes that are going to transfer over there are liberal arts classes, such as um, English classes or science classes or history classes, um, stuff like that. Um, and this is because Berkeley and the Boston Conservatory uh, wants you to take their theater classes. Um, so if you take a music class from another school, it's, it's not going to transfer. Even AP Music Theory, um, that doesn't give you any credits. It did help me. Um, get experience, but it, it did not give me any tangible credits at Berkeley. Um, so it really depends on your current program. Um, I would definitely uh, just, um, I, I would definitely uh, look up, there's a page on Berkeley's website about transfer credits, and that will list um, all of the courses that are eligible for you to transfer as a student not currently at Berkeley. And most of these are liberal arts classes. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, and then we also have another question. Um, so they're asking about financial aid. So if we do not get a scholarship for Berkeley or Boston Conservatory, but cannot afford the tuition on our own, do you have any advice on how to get the money for it? This is a wonderful question. And I know a lot of people who are in the same boat um, that, 
they get into Berkeley, they really want to follow their dreams, but they just don't have the money. It's an expensive school. Um, Berkeley does offer a need-based scholarship every year called the Thrive Scholarship um, that you can uh, automatically be considered for based on your financial need and how well you're doing at Berkeley. Um, so that's a great option for you to get a scholarship from Berkeley while you're there. I also know a lot of people who have either applied for loans or have started a GoFundMe page um, to fundraise for them to study at Berkeley uh, because a lot of people at Berkeley, they, you know, don't, they don't have the money to cover by themselves. I sure don't. If, if I was in the same pool um, as, as them, uh, as people who don't have that money, I would do what I'm suggesting right now. Start that page, try to fundraise money. Um, you can definitely get a loan. Um, when you get your financial aid award letter from Berkeley, it's going to show you all federal awards that you're eligible for. It's not just Berkeley awards. So you might get a Pell grant if, um, if you have a low income, if you're in great need, you might get a federal um, subsidized or unsubsidized loan. So even if you don't end up getting a scholarship from Berkeley, um, there are other options um, from the government and also just from raising money to get you there. Um, and I also encourage applying to outside scholarships. I, even as someone who received a full tuition scholarship, I've applied to over 10 outside scholarship programs a year to help me cover my housing. Um, so these are very important and not that hard to apply to. Um, there are programs out there with just a quick Google search, you can find scholarship programs that cater towards musicians, scholarship programs that cater towards your um, cultural background or your, um, your, or your gender identity. Um, for me, there were lots of scholarships that I applied to that were catered towards people with low vision because I have low vision. So that's where I got most of my outside money from. And I will share a big scholarship program with all of you um, that can get you thousands of dollars. And it is very easy to apply to. It's called the Taco Bell Live Moss Scholarship. You can apply and receive the scholarship up to four times, I believe. Um, you can just search that up, Taco Bell Live Moss Scholarship. And all you need to do for that scholarship, besides providing basic information, is uh, create a two minute video about your passion and how getting a scholarship and continuing to college will help you with that passion. And considering everything that I just said about Berkeley and passion, I think this scholarship is perfect for you guys. And they award scholarships in the amount of 5,000, 10,000, and even $25,000 you can get a year. I got $10,000 for two years, 10,000. I wasn't even expecting a penny. So that's one scholarship that I would say definitely apply to. You all have that potential and you you have that passion if you're considering Berkeley. So thanks for asking that question. Awesome, thank you. Um, our next question is from Kalashri. I hope you're pronouncing your name right, but they said, hi, Izzy, this was a fantastic presentation. Um, I still have a few years left of high school and I'm wondering what I should be doing right now to help me prepare and possibly attending Berkeley. So do you have any tips on a high school student wanting to apply? Yeah, this is an awesome question. And I'm so glad that you're considering this uh, so early in your high school years because um, I didn't know about Berkeley until I was about to apply for college. Um, so I would say uh, the same advice that I give when attending Berkeley, really try to uh, have all the opportunities that you can get um, so that when you apply to Berkeley, you get to show your experience and, and how much you've done through music uh, to the judges. And this doesn't have to mean releasing an EP or getting private lessons, those are expensive, but even stuff like participating in an extra ensemble in high school, or uh, participating in a community band, for example, um, that can really like bump up your resume, so to speak, and really get your foot in the water of um, just playing your instrument more 
um, then you might be able to, at your school, whether you have one music class or three or four. So getting all those ensemble experiences is definitely gonna help you out. Uh, like I said, academics can help you, your SAT score or whatever, um, but I would say that just doing more musical opportunities um, with a group is that can really make a difference compared to just your academics. So thanks for asking. Yeah, also um, a continuation of the last question, Kashi also asked, um, also if I want to start producing my own music right now, do you have any advice for how to start using music production software, equipment, and DAWSs, et cetera? And like, again, I just wanted to say that I loved your slideshow so much and I would love to know what you use to make it. <laughs> yeah, it was an amazing <laughs> slideshow. Oh yeah, thank you so much to um, whoever asked that question. Uh, I love this question because I had this exact same question when I first started attending Berkeley. I had no idea how to produce my own music. If you have a MacBook, you um, have a free software called GarageBand, which is actually very similar to the software that Berkeley makes you use called Logic Pro 10. So that's a software that you can use virtual instruments and uh, record um, virtual instruments on there. Like uh, you can have a virtual bass, for example, like not a real bass, but if you can hook up, uh, you can buy a MIDI keyboard um, that, that looks, it looks like a mini piano basically. And you connect that to your computer. And then once you boot up GarageBand, you connect that and you're able to have a bass sound through a piano looking instrument. Um, so that's really cool. And you're able to also record through your microphone as well. So that's basically a Logic Pro 10 Lite. Um, it, it gives you a lot of just experience with how everything works, setting in microphone inputs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you don't have a Mac, um, there's also software such as FL Studio and Pro Tools and even free software such as Soundtrap, which gives you a more basic overview of, mu of music production. Uh, one of the biggest things that I would suggest doing when starting music production is mess around with loops. These are basically repeating sections of an instrument that you can drag into the DAW um, and you can make your own arrangement just by dragging different loops um, even if you're not physically recording anything. So that gives you experience with all the instruments that you can use and also the layout of the DAW. Um, so the top gear I'd recommend for that, of course, you're gonna need a, a computer or an iPad. Um, you're going to need a MIDI keyboard for, for Berkeley. So you can also get one of those if you wanna record virtual instruments and just figure out how that works and, and get experience. Um, and of course um, you can get a microphone for recording, but your your uh, internal mic is also going to work just fine, just for for starting out. For anyone looking to distribute their music and not know how to do it, I've been there. DistroKid is literally the easiest way to get your music on Spotify, Apple Music, Prime Music, YouTube, everything, and it's very cheap. It's called DistroKid. Um, just distrokid.com. It is literally very cheap. It is $20 a year. You can upload any original song and have it sent to these streaming platforms in days. It is so easy. And I wish I knew this before going to Berkeley because I've always wanted to make an album before then and had no idea how. So on top of everything that I said about GarageBand, FL Studio, Pro Tools, et cetera, um, once you have your music ready, or if you already have music and you want to distribute it, um, definitely check out DistroKid. It is literally so simple. Even if you want to do a cover song, if you have a recording of you, uh, you know, produ uh, produced cover song or you playing piano to a cover song or something, and you want to put that on Spotify, you can do that through, through DistroKid as well. Um, there's a little, there's a small fee. I think it's a dollar a month. So $12 a year. Um, 
to have cover songs out. That's that's to pay the royalties to the original artist because it, it is their song. Um, other than that, DistroKid, I highly recommend I've been using it ever since I've released my own music on Spotify, which you can search under my name, Izzy Guzman. Um, and it's very affordable, very easy to use. And that's what I would definitely recommend for getting the music out there. So, um, and what I use to make this presentation, I use Canva. It's a free uh, graphic design website. You can use it to make Instagram posts, presentations, uh, video slides, everything. And, and it's free. Um, I have a pro subscription just because I use Canva all the time, but uh, I, I love using Canva for presentations or I had an assignment one time where I had to create a diagram of my home studio layout. So I use Canva to like put all the images together and put in all the text and make it look all cute and aesthetic. You can even use it to make a logo for like your personal brand, for example, or a company. So it's just canva.com. It's free and it's a really great tool. So highly recommend. Um, thank you for your question. Okay, so just one last question since we are running a bit over time. So this one is from Joy Wang and they asked, how do you compete as a solo artist with those who are signed by record labels or are in notable groups slash orchestras? And how does one go about gaining recognition? Um, how does someone go about what? Gaining recognition. Oh, gaining recognition. Okay. Yeah. Um, being an independent artist is definitely different than having a manager and being signed to a label because you really have to do everything yourself. So I've had to learn over the years that promoting myself through social media is the way to get your name out there to people and to promote your music. Instagram is uh, Instagram and, and TikTok as well are the two biggest platforms that anyone can use to promote their music, share their stories, or just share practice videos, literally anything music related you will find on those two apps. And that's how a lot of um, even just regular jazz musicians in high school rose to fame, so to speak because they posted consistently on Instagram or TikTok and shared their practice videos and all their, their stories and insights. Uh, I started an Instagram account when COVID first hit. Uh, I was just about to graduate high school and I just started doing something new. So I started sharing videos of me practicing. If you stalk my page and scroll way down, you will see videos of me playing euphonium on there. Um, that was my uh, very past era. But posting consistently and following people who uh, go to Berkeley or other music schools or just are musicians in general, um, that really is the recipe to promoting music out there. I'm still learning it myself. I only have about 2,700 followers, so I'm not anywhere close to uh, 10k or 100k or a million um, but that's what's helped me so far and if you're if you're wanting to be an independent artist uh, that is the way to do it is having a social media pages and also having a website so thanks for asking mm -hmm. yeah just really utilizing social media <laughs> for sure yeah um so I think that is all for the questions today so um, thank you again, Izzy, for coming. And thank you, everyone, for coming as well and engaging and really asking questions about music school and your future. So, yeah, thank you, everyone, for attending. I hope you guys all learned something. I know I did. I learned a lot from just this whole one hour. And, um, yeah, if you have any more questions, you can always reach out to Izzy. Um, we had her info. And... If you would like to learn more about future opportunities, you can also follow us at From Art to Heart on Instagram or check us our check out our website at fromartoheart.org. But yeah, thank you everyone for coming here. And um, I hope that everyone has a great rest of the week. Thank you, everybody. Guys.
Okay, I got rid of all the attendees.